back to Wellness Wednesday. Our doctors are all back with us to answer your specific health and wellness questions. Please welcome back Dr. Alexander Quo from Virginia Mason, Dr. Avanit Chowdhury from Overlake Medical Center, and Dr. Christina Brecht from Aesthetic Rejuvenation. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. Um, Dr. Quo, let's talk about the stigma for people who have hep C and how that sometimes keeps them from either going to the doctor or telling their doctor and what we need to do about this. I think this is a big issue uh, because we have such great treatments now, but if people aren't comfortable talking to the doctors about getting the screening test, uh, they're not going to be identified. And so of the 5 million Americans that have hepatitis C, only about half know they have the infection. Yikes. And this is because we're afraid somebody will make an assumption about how we got it, we were needle users with drugs or whatever, but Potentially, your doctor I, is I, just wanting to help you. I, I think hopefully if you have a good relationship with your doctor where you can be open and honest, that's always the best. But if you're embarrassed about a potential uh, behavior in your past, you can still just ask your doctor to, to, to order the test because you, you heard that the CDC or the U.S. Preventative Task Force recommends <laughs> boomers uh, to get screened one time. There you go. Tattoo needles, is there a risk? Um, not if you're going to a licensed shop, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to a shop, these are all, um, uh, it's, it's completely sterile. Uh, the risk is really if you're getting home tattoos uh, and whoever's administering the tattoo is not using sterile equipment, that, that's where we see the risk okay. of transmission. So like don't go to your friend's garage for a tattoo. Um, strokes, let's talk about aspirin. That's you, something that you mentioned that you might take a baby aspirin after you've had a TIA or, or stroke. Would that be a preventative thing that people should do in general? So it, it's a great prevention to uh, prevent yourself from having a stroke. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want you to take it if you think you're having a stroke actively. At the time. Right, because okay. about 15% of strokes are the bleeding type. And if you take a blood thinner, you've just made it worse. And we can't tell that until you get a CAT scan in the emergency room. All right, so the, the bottom line with you is just call an ambulance. Call, <laughs> call 911. Call to remember, call 911. <laughs> do it. Yeah. And then King County has a, a pretty cool thing where they'll take you to a hospital that can do some of these specialized treatments, right? Right. So King County is uh, actually very progressive uh, nationwide in how it triages patients to centers that can really help them uh, and not just help them on a superficial level, but with the latest treatments. So right. uh, yeah, King County EMS now will take you if you have a stroke or they think you're having a large vessel stroke to a center that can go in and fish that blood clot out uh, in addition to just give you the IV medications. That is really cool. Now is that something that's fairly new, correct? It's fairly new. Uh, it just uh, it started really in January of this year. And that keeps you, first of all, it gets you treated faster and you don't have to make a transfer to another unit. Why aren't we doing this everywhere? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. Um, it, it, well, okay, that's fine. Uh, strokes and heart condition, is there a relationship between those? Uh, there is, so you know, anytime you have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, it doesn't affect just one part of your body, it affects your whole body, it affects your kidneys, affects your brain, affects your heart. So people that have heart disease probably should get their carotid arteries and their neck looked at, as well as the brain arteries as well, because those can also develop plaques like the heart develops. Right. All of this has made me wonder, Dr. Brecht, for yes. you, um, what do you like to see with people before they undergo an elective procedure? Well, um, I have a, a pretty extensive medical background in addition to my surgery background, so I'm able to um, screen a lot of the things, but they, they obviously should be healthy before they, they come in. Um, w because I don't do the surgeries under general anesthesia, um, they don't need some of the more vigorous workups um, like a chest x-ray or an EKG mm -hmm. necessarily. Um, whatever their medical issue just needs to be stable. Um, and um, the anesthesia I use is kind of like a big local. So you can think of it like if you were going to remove a skin lesion, what medical um, safety do you need when you remove a skin right. lesion? So the same, and essentially, even when I'm doing a tummy tuck or a breast lift, um, it's the same safety measures. How do you manage the other side of this, the emotional or psychological side of why people want a surgery, what their expectations are, and navigating all of that? That is an amazing, wonderful question, and it is very complicated. Um, certainly, this is something special above and beyond. Um, it is a huge boost uh, emotionally for a lot of patients who maybe felt unhappy a part of their body. It boosts them to exercise, to want to maintain the results. It makes them feel emotionally happier. It's, it's part of that overall medical well-being. And um, if that is their objective, 
that is an amazing reason to do it, um, to just help with overall well-being of, of themselves. But if somebody comes into you and says, I need to do this because I'm afraid my marriage will break up if I don't, what do you tell them? It, it, that is a very challenging because um, no surgery or medical treatment can, can help with their particular relationship. And, um, but I, I still listen. I, I want to help them. And um, I want to help adjust their expectations to what the surgery can do for them as an individual, um, how it can make them better individually. Um, we don't want them to look like, they don't need to look like somebody else. Um, so it, it is a positive thing, but making sure that their expectations yeah. are adjusted properly. You have a complex job It is, it's very way. complicated, but it's wonderful. Artistic and challenging. Yeah, uh, you all do amazing things. Thank you very much. We'll have more New Day after this.